ask you questions, ask me questions, talk about various things. We have Mary Prunes. Is she here in Florida? Welcome, Mary. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you, Matt and Owen? All right. Doing well. Um, um, Owen, I've watched a lot of your shows, and I really love the perspective you bring. Um, Appreciate that. I have that. a couple of questions. Um, first, a comment is, is uh, a mother of one son. He's an adult now. It, it breaks my heart to hear of uh, parents disowning their children for not believing like they do. And, and um, it, uh, I, I can't even explain how much that hurts me. But if you're in my area, I'm your mama. If you need anything. Anyway, okay. um, I've watched. I watched some of the um, Jehovah's Witnesses, that guy that's got a really strange cadence when he talks. Stephen Lett, I don't know his name. Yes, yes. And um, why why do uh, most JW children attend public schools when they're so... um, they have to leave for the pledge and can't celebrate birthday and Christmas. Does the uh, JWs not have their own schools, much like, you know, Christian, Baptist, Catholic schools? Yeah, that's actually an interesting question. Uh, I have been asked that once before. It was a while ago, like forever ago. So I had to actually look into it and think about it at, at length. And um, the answer is, I, as far as I can tell, for one thing, Jehovah's Witnesses didn't want to put the money into doing something like that. And d- they didn't want to be like involved in the, the amount of government regulation that would likely come along with that, first of all. And second, just this is from my own experience, so take it with a grain of salt. But I, in my opinion, I think that they also want children to have the experience of being different from everybody else and being persecuted and mistreated and bullied for it. Um, You know, there's no reason why they would, there's no reason why a child should ever go to school on Valentine's day when everybody is passing out Valentine's and be expected to sit in the classroom and reject Valentine's from other kids there's no reason why anybody should ever expect their kid to like not say the Pledge of Allegiance, not stand or not sit or whatever, intentionally just to be different from everybody else, uh, seemingly. No reason why a kid should ever be expected to not sing along in music class with, you know, uh, Jingle Bells or, or whatever Santa Claus coming to town or whatever other songs they have going on. There's no reason, seemingly, other than they just want kids to feel different and to be different and recognize that difference, um, which kind of primes them to feel othered and separate from the rest of the world. That's just kind of how it seems to me. But again, just take it with a grain of salt. Um, That's just from my own experience. So it's almost like... um, them being persecuted just helps to reinforce that they are right and everyone else is wrong and evil. Is that kind of yeah? The basically, they want to motive? drive the wedge. Yeah, drive a wedge between the rest of the world as humanly possible. They most definitely do do that. Now, is that the reason why they don't have their own schools? I don't know, but it's that with kids it did with me so oh and you know you're not allowed to have friends when you go to school either you're not allowed to hang out with other kids you're not allowed to go over to their house or have sleepovers or anything at all and when they invite you you have to say no i can't i'm a jehovah's witness and we don't you know hang out with outsiders and stuff so yeah it's definitely a component yes which i think is just so detrimental but yeah. um, but I love the work you do. It, it's it's great, 
And Thanks I've so been much. watching a lot it. of um, Lloyd Evans mm. and um, finding out just how it, they just keep saying it's the end of the end of the near the end end times. <laughs> Like, yeah, it gets ridiculous. Uh, how how many recursive gonna... ends are we going to hit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it actually reminds me of, of yes, my you it, know, Southern Baptist upbringing, because while we, we weren't perhaps as, as gung-ho on that as um, Jehovah's Witnesses are at the moment, um, I, that's all I heard growing up. You know, you're living in the end times. This is spiritual warfare. The enemy is coming after us. Uh, all these things that you're saying, all of it is leading to, you know, Armageddon. Um, and you know, there's a holy war coming. I mean, it was every day, every day of my life. And I, I was just Southern Baptist. It was just particularly pernicious Southern, Southern Baptist. Yeah, I was Southern Baptist too. And we didn't, we didn't get too much of that. I just know the last 15 minutes of the hour long sermon was about burning in hell, you know, but, um, Matt, I have a quick you question a for question. you and then I'll let y'all go. Yep. Um, I, I watched the debate between Aaron and Daniel, the, um, Muslim. Yes. And you asked a question toward the end and I could barely hear it. And, and <sighs> I know Daniel kept going on about atheists living in pods and these orgies with 10 other atheists and, and your question was something about I didn't get the memo. What what was it you asked? <laughs> um, I I basically asked. Uh, you keep talking about the the plans that all of these elite atheists have for taking over the world and making people live in pods and everything else. I'm I guess I'm not high enough in the atheist order because nobody has given me the memo to let me know that this is what we're supposed to be working towards. Um, and, and these are things, some of them are things that I object to. And some of them I think are, you know, like if you want to complain about doing drugs and playing video games, um, you're not going to get me to, to say anything other than, yeah, okay, I'm, you want to play drugs and or do drugs and play video games, whatever. Um, it was, it was a mocking question of you keep talking about what atheists are trying to do and no atheist I've ever met or ever talked to. And I've sat on stage with Dawkins and Harris and been to conventions with pretty much anybody and everybody you can name. And not one of them has ever suggested that people should be living in pods, doing drugs, playing video games, et cetera. Um, it was just bizarre. But I will say that the laws coming out of Indonesia right now, that, that debate, by the way, for those who haven't seen it, pl please go watch it. It was over when Aaron was about two thirds of the way through his opening statement. Everything after that while you can watch it for your own enjoyment, um, it isn't really relevant because at that point they were talking past each other. But Arn's opponent, Daniel, the subject of the debate was, which is better for the world, Islam or atheism? Now, yes, it's a false dichotomy. And yes, atheism isn't a worldview, but Arn defended basically humanist principles um, and his, his left-leaning humanist principles in particular. Um, so they at least got it out of the false dichotomy uh, area to where they were actually discussing two people's different views of what the world should be. And his opponent was co just complaining about how atheists want this and this and this and this and this. And most of the stuff he listed, I was like, yes, uh, <laughs> I'm in favor of equality and not uh, forcing women to wear bags um, I'm in favor. Yeah. Oh, we, we don't care about uh, old timey uh, or, or uh, traditional values. You're correct. I don't give a fuck about traditional values unless they are good. The, the fact that they're traditional isn't what makes them good. It's whether or not they're actually beneficial. <laughs> but what's happening in Indonesia is absolute, complete confirmation. <coughs> Excuse me that a world under Muslim rule is worse than a rule under secular humanist rule, just undeniably. There's not a secular humanist organization on the planet that's going to make sex outside of marriage illegal, that's going to make apostasy illegal, that's going to make it illegal to talk shit about the president. That is absolutely about um, control 
and fear. Right. Because if you yeah. if you're if you're the president and you don't want anybody to 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 disparage you, uh, that's because you know they're going to, and you know that you don't have a good response to it. And so if you if you can't do anything else, you just make it illegal. Yeah. Well, um, I'm waiting on my pod and my invitations to atheist orgy, so I'll check my mail. Keep doing it. I, I hear that I, I've been to several conventions where I heard there was an orgy. I just wasn't invited, so that's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone here. Thanks all so right. much, Mary. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Owen. Love you dearly. I'm, I'm a mama. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Glad you like my stuff. Thanks, Mary. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer for The Line and avid candy eater. Hey, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so now on Patreon or as a channel member with tiers specific to supporting specific shows and hosts. And it also supports our ability to expand programming going forward. You could also leave a super thanks down below, get a little special highlighted comment. And I'll tell you what, you could hit like and you could hit subscribe. Now, here are some video suggestions so we can fudge that algorithm. Go with one of ours. Forget everyone else on YouTube. I'm begging.